Dewey Hammond, I am here with Villanova men's basketball head coach Jay Wright. Jay, you have been with Villanova program for nearly a decade now. Talk about how you've been able to turn them around from a, a maybe an NIT team to basically a Sweet 16 team every year, it seems like. Well, as, as you know, Dewey, there's great tradition at Villanova, and, and uh, one of the most important things we wanted to do when we got there was um, is just establish uh, with every player that came in the tradition, you know, that they understood they were playing for uh, something much bigger than themselves, and uh, they're always talking about the history of Villanova, and um, I, I think our guys have bought into that, so it's, as a coach, it's, it's great to be a part of that. We've had some really good young players that have bought into that. Now, talk a bit about the, the history and the tradition. Obviously, Raleigh Massimino, the 1985 championship. And I think you probably first made your, your national mark with that 2005-2006 team where you had Alan Ray, you had Mike Nardi, and obviously the bigger guys that went pro, Randy Foy, you know, a very successful team. And, and you talked a bit about the history and, and Raleigh Massimino, and he's kind of come back into the picture a bit as, as sort of a, a, a mascot, if you yeah. will. <laughs> Well, you know, at Vill the great thing about Villanova is it's a real tight family, and, and the tradition goes all the way back to the first Final Four ever played. 1939, the first Final Four ever played was at the Palestra in Philadelphia. Villanova was in it. Then in 71, Coach Kraft brought Howard Porter and Chris Ford and Tom Inglesby and all those guys to the Final Four. They played against UCLA in the championship game. Coach Mass brought the team to the national championship in 85. Uh, Steve Lapis took the team to the NIT championship, and all those guys, from Coach Kraft, Bill Melchioni, Tom Inglesby, Chris Ford, all the way up to Kerry Kittles, Randy Foy, they all come back. Uh, we have what we call Summer Jam on August 30th. All the players come back, play golf. We have a big party with their families. So everybody that played for Villanova still, to this day, is a big part of Villanova basketball. Now, when, when you joined the Villanova program, the expectations uh, weren't that necessarily you'd win a national championship, certainly not right out of the gate. So you surpassed those expectations along the way. Now it's obviously reset the bar. Getting to the Elite Eight, that's not enough for us anymore, Jay. you got to win it all. What do you tell your players after you, you, know, you get to the Final Four, you get to the Elite Eight, and you get knocked out? What are the conversations you have with these guys? Because we forget they're elite athletes, but they're kids. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting balance that... Um, you want the, the young guys coming in to respect the tradition and have high standards for themselves, but you also don't want to put the pressure on them of everyone's expectations. So you've got to find a balance. And what we usually try to do is we start every season with a clean slate. You know, we want to be the best team we can be by the end of the year. You know, let us determine how good we can be. Let's not put any limits on how good we can be. Um, and let's make sure by the end of that season we look each other in the eye and say, hey, this team became as good as they could be. It could be a national champion, it could be a final four, it could be a final eight, it could be a you know, first round NCAA tournament. We don't know. But let's not put limits on how good we can be. Let's work hard to be the best we can be. Now, if you could rewind to the beginning of last season, what would you have done differently? And I'm not asking you to pick apart your players. I'm asking you to pick apart your own coaching. What, in hindsight, could you have done differently to have a more successful team? You know what, Dewey, that, that's a great question. I don't think uh, I'm ready to make that decision until I see how this group plays this year. I thought, I, I know why we did a lot of the things we did. As a matter of fact, playing 11 guys, you know. I know why we did it. If this group of young guys, you, you know, the, the Malik Wayans and, and the Dominic Cheeks and people like that, if they play this year the way I think they can, then the decisions we made last year were good ones. If we still aren't at a level I think we can be, then, then I think I'll question maybe what we did last year. But I think our decisions last year had a lot to do with keeping the program going and seeing where we could be this year also, as well as trying to be the best team we could be last year. So what should Wildcat fans expect from the team this year? How's it going to be uh, different than the squad that you put on the floor last year? You know, hopefully we're a little bit more experienced. We were a really young team. We had talent, but um, when we played the teams at the end of the year, the, the West Virginias, the Pitts, the Syracuse, that were experienced teams, uh, even Marquette, you know, they kind of got us in the end. You know, we were just a little too young. We, we, we had to rely on just Scotty and Reggie because they were our veterans. Now with our seniors and Pena and um, and Fisher and Stokes, if, if those guys can really be leaders and then that sophomore class can really step up, we, we could be a pretty good team. So I always want Villanova fans to expect the same thing every year. We're going to play hard. We're going to play together. 
and we're going to play with pride in representing Villanova basketball. That's, we'll see how far that takes us. Were you surprised that Scotty wasn't picked up in the NBA draft? You know what, not really, because when he came out after his junior year, we kind of got the feeling that he'd be a late second round or not chosen. And he knew that. So they usually don't change their mind, no matter what you do in your senior year. Once the NBA guys evaluate you, they usually stick with that evaluation. So we were hoping, but we weren't really surprised. Now I want to talk to you about a guy who's who's no longer with the program, but I, I, I imagine he's got to be one of the favorite players you ever coached, Dante Cunningham. I mean, a guy who came in, I think his freshman year, he averaged about 1.9 points a game or 2.3. I mean, he, he wasn't even on the radar. And, and his improvement was so steady and consistent over four years that by the time he was a senior, I mean, he was he was a national name. Yeah. So who is this offseason's Dante Cunningham? I mean, who's the guy that is putting in the work that's going to really surprise people this year on the court? You know, I, I hope one of our seniors, I hope Corey Stokes, Corey Fisher, Antonio Pena, one of those guys, because they have put in the work. And I hope it pays off for them. Um, as you mentioned, Dante was a great example of a guy that worked, worked, worked. His senior year led us to a Final Four. I think uh, uh, Corey Fisher, Corey Stokes, Antonio Pena have put in the same work. Now you hope the, the fairy tale finishes the same way for them. That's what I'd like to see. Now you talked earlier in this interview about Villanova being a family. And uh, obviously your name over the years has been associated with uh, a number of NBA head coaching positions. Most usually it's the Philadelphia 76ers. Now uh, I'm going to get a little, I'm, I'm going to take off my professional hat for a minute, my, get personal as a Villanova graduate. You know, I think you really have the opportunity to create a legacy for yourself, similar to, to one of your colleagues now, Coach K, like he's done down in Duke, where Coach K is, I mean, legitimately untouchable down at Duke. I mean, he is, they'll be building him a statue 10 minutes after he's out the door. I think you really have an opportunity to do the same thing at Villanova. When you look at your long-term future, is the NBA something that's a career goal for you, or are you Villanova for life? No, you know, I, I love Villanova. I don't have any plans to go anywhere else. Uh, the only thing I do know about this business is that uh, you never know what's going to happen, but I hope to be at Villanova for a long time. Any final words for the Wildcat fans out there? Uh, let's get fired up for the season, man. We, we're excited. Our guys are working hard this summer, and um, we're, we're really fired up to, to get this season started. And now here we are in Las Vegas with the U.S. men's select team, which is the college players that work with the national team. Talk a bit about your experience coaching these guys. Well, this is great. You know, in the middle of the summer, get out and work with the top players and, and go against the, the, uh, the national team. It's been a great experience working with Coach K, Coach Krzyzewski, uh, Mike D'Antoni, and, and Nate McMillan, and Jay Triano. It's, it's a coach's dream. So these kids have been great. They've worked really hard for us. And we got John Olive here and Pat Chambers, Villanova guys. So we keep the family together, but we're enjoying USA basketball. Who has surprised you the most on this select team? Uh, you know, a lot of guys have, been, have really shown well. Um, probably Chris Singleton from Florida State. Very impressive. Big, big perimeter player. And, uh, but all these guys are pretty good. Now, I, I know you got some other big East guys here on the select team. Are you learning things about them as a coach as opposed to being on the other side of the sideline as an opponent's coach? Yeah, you know, Kemba Walker's done a, done a great job. Scoop Jardine's done a great job. Uh, very, very impressed with, uh, with them and coaching them. You can see how coachable they are, which you don't, you don't really know until you, until you get on the floor with them. Jay, thank you for your time and best of luck with Villanova and best of luck with the national team. Thanks, too. We keep doing a good job, man.